Hey guys and welcome to this new class in the electrical system. Today we will be discussing transformers. Right, so the first thing that we need to know in terms of transformers is that the general concept of a transformer itself is to move from AC to DC, alternated current to direct current, right? Now, how do we do this? Well, we have in order to understand this, and I want you to understand very well what transformers do, is to go to the fundamentals, okay, to the basic physical theory related to transformers. So, first of all, aircraft transformers are simply passive electrical devices that transfer electrical energy from one circuit to another. This is the basic definition that you need for transformers, okay? Now, varying currents produce varying magnetic fluxes, which is transmitted, which will be transmitted circuit circuit, okay? So this means that by varying our current, as you can see over here, this is the signal of our current, okay? We are actually able to produce a magnetic flux. And a varying magnetic flux, which is transmitted through this uh, metallic conductive connection, okay? By varying the magnetic flux, we are actually able to connect, in terms of magnetic flux, the first circuit to the second circuit, okay? And the first thing that you probably realize here is that we were talking initially transformers uh, transforming AC to DC, but in this case what we're doing is transforming AC to AC, right? Now, the amount of turns in a winding, meaning that in this case we, we would have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay? And in this case also we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but if in this case we had 10, and in this case we had 5, for instance, what we would have is that the secondary voltage, secondary meaning this part, and primary meaning this part, okay, would be the voltage of the primary times the secondary number of, wind, you know, of uh, turns in a winding divided by the number of turns in the primary. Okay, so what does this mean? That in this case, if we had 10 over here, 10 turns, and five turns of our coil, 10 divided by five, so in this case it would be the secondary divided by the primary, so it would be five divided by 10, okay, that would be 0.5, so divided in between, you know, among two, so that would be VP, or the primary voltage divided by two, right? So this would be in the case that I said we had um, 10 and five, right? So basically, Again, what I want to say here is that this transformer, an initial approach of a transformer, which is this idea over here, will only change the magnitude of the voltage of our signal, okay? So this means by that by changing the number of turns that we have on the primary and the secondary and making um, you know, a design of how many turns we want from the primary and the secondary, we can actually determine the voltage that we will get from the signal afterwards. But this does not imply that we're getting a DC signal, but rather that we're getting an alternating current, but with a different voltage, okay? Or a different intensity, for instance. Right, so what do we have to do in addition to make sure that we get DC, not, uh, not only an alternating current with another voltage, okay? So the first thing that we need to do is to consider aircraft rectifiers. Now, the idea of the rectifier is that they use diodes in order to force the electrical current to be kept positive. Positive in the se in the sense that we define positive on, you know, on the upper half and negative on the lower half, okay? So this would be positive and over here it would be negative. So the idea is that by making a combination of diodes, which I will now explain, we are actually able to keep the signal only on top, right? So rectifiers are essential to transform alternating current to direct current, as I mentioned before. And also, in addition to that, the use of capacitors, which store the electrical energy, will probably enhance the geometry of the current wave, okay? More on the capacitors but later, let's talk about the diodes. Right, so this is what the schematic is of us of what not you know what we, a simple connection would be if we have a positive right if we compare for instance the blue over here which would be for the primary and the secondary which is the uh, 
the orange one, okay? If we have a positive, then we have a positive on the other side, which it's a direct transform, you know? So it, it may change the value of the voltage, but if this is positive, this remains positive. Maybe the, the value is a bit different, but it's kept positive. If it's negative, this is kept negative, right? So this is what it means. Negative is kept negative, positive is kept negative positive right so in the case of using this combination of diodes what we are actually able to achieve is that even in the case that this is positive and negative like being this case okay where we have the positive on top and the negative on below this is would be the case and in this case we have it reversed so it would be on the lower case right so in each one of the cases because we're using diodes and diodes allow only for one direction of the of the electrical current we would be forced to keep it in this way afterwards okay what I mean is that by having positive on top negative like this by using this combination of diodes we actually obtain this rather if we change it if we reverse it the system will work in a way that will only allow for the electrical flow to move in a way which actually guarantees that the same direction is kept from before right so again what we get from the rectifiers is basically a positive signal out of a positive negative positive negative alternating signal right so this is a good approach to uh, how to get dc from low alternating current uh here you can see what would it look you know what it would look like if we were actually using capacitors also which is basically having the same system we had before right but in addition to that we just add a capacity over here okay so by doing that what we're actually making is that this curve instead of looking as we had before this alternating curve it will kind of look which is a you know more constant over time losing because of the fact that the capacity will be charged and the capacitor has the ability or has the capacity sorry whoops to store the electrical energy right so it will it will simply store the electrical energy although the signal goes down this is the idea and it will be kept at a more or less constant value which will be called the dc voltage okay right so in other in our case really as i mentioned before what i've been commenting until now is not essentially it's essentially true but it's not exact because of the fact that we're using three phase so if we're using three phase as you can see over here what we will do is design a six pulse rectifier which allows for the optimal configuration of uh, the dc voltage that you get out okay so basically it will turn on it will change the way that we are actually operating this combination of diodes in order to always be fulfilling or getting from the signal the uttermost values okay so the highest values and by doing this and by as i mentioned before by keeping it positive we will almost get already a dc voltage okay a, a constant voltage over time which is what we're looking for right so this is the main idea of what the transformer rectifier unit for an aircraft actually does and as i mentioned before because we're using 400 hertz we're using um, we can use very low um, lightweight materials right and therefore the magnets are relatively small and because we have some relatively small magnets we have relatively small transformers so this is what the transformer rectifier unit does which is the combination of what I said before in the case of a three phase right and this is what it looks like in addition this is what we would look like more or less if you were to compare it to the size of an aircraft so as you can see it's clearly an advantage to use the 400 hertz approach okay so let's go to the next class